Hey guys, this is Nato. I thought I'd take a minute to show you something I've been working on the past few months. Now, in August, I posted a thread on the forums about a crate job system for UT. Essentially, I had an idea for a UI for that, so I went ahead and built it using Blueprint and Unreal Motion graphics. There are a few little bugs in this system, but overall I'm pretty happy with it, and hopefully you will be too. First off, uh, the system allows you to have lots of different crate types. These are all based off a sort of a master crate, and you simply inherit that crate in a new blueprint and or create a child of that but of that blueprint even uh, and then you can change things like the material whether or not it's metallic or whether or not it has um, wear on it the color of that wear uh, the color of the dirt a few other things um, and you can get a sort of a wide variety of different crate types now something I did think about implementing but haven't in this particular version is having a sort of decal on the top um, due to the way I made the UVs of that of this material of this uh, texture for this the UVs of this mesh even um, having that embedded into the texture would be a little difficult uh, into the material even also the material is running quite a few texture samples already so having a decal on the top projected onto it via the blueprint might be a better solution than having it baked into the into the texture map as it were into the material even. But yeah, we have uh, various different crate types. Um, now these are all in sort of a, a rough rarity uh, a rough rarity list. So you have the epic crate, which is sort of bright and golden, all nice looking. Uh, you have the unreal crate, which is kind of a more dusky silver, still quite sort of shiny metallic. You have a pristine crate, uh, which doesn't have much sort of scrapes and sort of battle damage almost on it. And that sort of progresses down through the sort of standard blue, green, white, and then sort of very bottom of the rung, very heavily sort of damaged, beaten up little crate. Uh, this being the sort of most common that you're likely to find. But this system, this rarity system, is completely, it only exists just to show that you can have all these different crate types. Um, so, the next thing to look at is the examine screen. Now this brings up the crate into sort of a more a more full view. Um, or something I forgot to mention is uh, yes, you may have seen me doing this. You can rotate the crates and have a look at them, uh, see them in a bit more detail, uh, and sort of yeah, it's a bit more tactile than, than the CS:GO system, which just has a sort of single fixed image um, of of your crate. I think this makes it feel a bit more real, feel a bit more like you when you win a crate. It feels Sort of more solid, more real, more right, right there as, a, as an actual object. Anyway, yes, you can go to the examine screen, and uh, you'll get this list on the left, which uh, which shows you what this crate might contain. Um, again, this is in a rough sort of rare rarity order, um, with a list of sort of common, uncommon, rare, and then sort of ultra rare. Now, this list is generated each for each crate in particular. Uh, almost all the crates in this list have the same contents just to expedite kind of the system. There's only one that doesn't which is the Stacy Special which as you might be able to predict has a pink flat cannons and that's all you can get in this crate. Um, but yeah this this just to show that this list on the left and in fact the entire contents of each crate is tied to the crate specifically rather than sort of in an abstract way. So let's go ahead and open our epic crate so the first thing is, uh, first concept to th talk about here is keys, so uh, or key codes. Now, for, to open each crate, to open any crate, you need a key code. Uh, this account currently has none on them, so I can go ahead and buy some. Uh, I can buy up to five. This account has twenty dollars on it. Uh, currently, that's not on screen. I wasn't quite sure how uh, Epic wanted to handle or the UT team wanted to handle putting that information on the screen, whether they wanted to have it in this sort of view, or whether they wanted to have it sort of in the top right, um, so that that sort of persisted through all the different menus. But for this case, I just have it, it's not on screen. Uh, if you go over the cost of a key, uh, if you take your balance over, so if you take the cost of your keys over the, your current balance, the text turns red. Um, if it's under, it's green. There's a little button here which adds funds. In theory that would take you to a prompt to 
buy uh, buy extra account money from another source, um, similar to the, to the 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 Steam Wallet functionality. But for now, it just adds ten dollars to to the account. Uh, the cost of the key here is also I just pulled a number sort of out of nowhere and decided that that's how much a key costs. That's not really reflective of how uh, sort of the of what I think keys should cost or ethics set told you know it's it's completely random don't think about that as as how much keys are going to cost it's it's just a uh, it's just a little placeholder so let's go ahead and buy let's buy eight keys uh, for thirty one dollars which is a bit extortionate but there we go um, so the next thing we can do is, is we can buy and use key code so this will take our value our number of keys down to seven but we'll open the crate now this opens up our little ticker here which takes down to a particular item ooh, ooh. Okay, we got the murdered out flat uh, flat cannon. So that uh, that's very much like the CS:GO system, where you get a ticker that goes across, lands on an item, and that's the item that you win. Uh, we'll uh, open that up again. This time, now that we have seven keys assigned to this account, we get a different key code, a different uh, pop-up even, and that says, uh, you know, open Unreal Crate with simple key code. Yep, we'll use that. Okay, so this list here is generated from the list we saw before of the possible items in this crate. Uh, currently, the way I do this is I just have kind of a list of, it generates, I think it's 35 different tiles and then generates a random starting point and then ticks for, I think it's eight seconds, I think I made it, uh, until, it might not be eight seconds, it might be six seconds. It ticks for a certain number of seconds down to whichever one it lands on. Now, that list is random each time each time you generate, it generates a um, a tile in that ticker, it's going to be a completely random tile. Um, so in this case, you, we are going to open this pristine ca uh, case with some key code, uh, and this list will be different every time, so we're going to win something different every time. This time it's the subtle sniper rifle, which is bright pink. Not bright pink, bright uh, orange, there's a different one that's bright pink. Speaking of bright pink, well, uh, let's open the Stacy special, and uh, lo and behold, yep, it's a pink flat cannon. <laughs> I just wanted to just, basically this is just here, Matt largely just to show that uh, that that list is linked to the to the specific crate. Now, something you may have just seen here is due to the way that this system works, um, which I'll go into in a second. Once you get under five crates you can't loop back through this is to stop uh, there was a, there was an edge case where if you were here sorry if you were if you were kind of at the third and you opened it and it went below three you could access the first one and it was an edge case uh, but it basically meant that you could end up opening two crates um, opening the same crate twice which was not not good um, so once you're under three sorry once you're under five it doesn't loop um, but let's open this. I want to show you what happens when you when you run out of crates for reference. This is why I'm opening all of them. Um, so yeah, I was I was pretty happy with this system. Uh, there are a few little bugs. For instance, this is currently being recorded at uh, 720p rather than full screen. When I'm on full screen, it seems to shift everything slightly to the right. It adds sort of like a 100 150 pixel padding to the right hand. Um, so over here, there's sort of a, a, a huge gap here, which doesn't really make any sense. I'm not sure why that's doing it. So if you have experience with uh, Unreal Motion graphics, do let me know if you've encountered that problem, because it's something I've not been able to solve. Um, and it's only on it, it's only on you know full screen resolutions. Um, it's the same aspect ratio. It do, it doesn't make sense to me, but uh, hopefully someone out there can can help me. Um, so I'll open this one. So I wanted to create something that was similar enough to the CSGO experience that you have that sort of that ticker which ticks down and you're kind of not sure which one you're going to win. You get to see possible things that you can win and they get passed and then it slows down and perhaps it's perhaps in like in this case it was bang in the middle. Uh, other times it's sort of right on the edge of ticking between one or the other and it has a bit of like a bit of tension there, which I thought was a very nice aspect of the ESCO system. Um, but 
doing something like making the crates so you can rotate them and look at the different angles, makes them feel more tactile, more real. Uh, it's not just sort of a single image on your on your vast uh, inventory. They're sort of specific and um, identifiable. But yeah, when you when you run out of crates or you haven't won any crates, you get this message saying you have no crates with a sad face and suggests that you go play games to win some. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that this system meets your approval or that you like it. Um, that's my phone going off, so I'll say thank you very much and say goodbye.